بسم اللہ وسلاۃ وسلام علیہ رسول اللہ وبعد السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ وی ریچڈ دا 21st سٹنگ آن دا 21st لیسن ناؤ الحمدللہ اینڈ ان شاء اللہ ٹوڈے ول بی گوئنگ تھرو دی امپورٹنس آف دا لاسٹ 10 نائٹس دا لاسٹ 10 ڈیز لاسٹ 10 ڈیز اینڈ نائٹس آف رمضان ان شاء اللہ سو دا شیخ سیز سیز المجلس الهادي والعشرون في فضل الاشر الاخير من رمضان وفي فضل الاشر الاخير من رمضان so uh, the virtues of the last 10 days and nights of Ramadan so the sheikh begins with his introduction الحمد لله المتفرد بالجلال والبقاء والعظمة والكبرياء والعز الذي لا يرام الواحد الأحد الرب السمد الملك الذي لا يحتاج إلى أحد العلي عن مدانات الأوهام الجليل العظيم الذي لا تدرك القول والأفهام الغني بذات بذاته عن جميع مخلوقاته فكل من سواه مفتقر إليه على الدوام وفق من شاء فآمن به واستقام ثم وجد لذة مناجاة مولاه فهجر لذيذ المنام وصحب رفقة تتجافى جنوبهم عن المضاجئ رغبة في المقام فلو رأيتهم وقد صارت قوافلهم في جندس الظلام فواحد يسأل العفو عن زلته وآخر يشكو ما يجد من لوعته وآخر شغله ذكره عن مسألته فسبحان من أيقظهم الناس نيام وتبارك الذي غفر وعفى وستر وكفى وأسبل على الكافة جميع الإنعام أحمده على نعمه الجسام وأشكره وأسأله حفظ نعمة الإسلام وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له عز عز من اعتز به فلا يضام وذل من تكبر عن طاعته ولقي الآثام وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله الذي بين الحلال والحرام صلى الله عليه وعلى صاحبه أبي بكر الصديق الذي هو في الغار خير رفيق وعلى عمر بن الخطاب الذي وفق للصواب وعلى أثمان مصابر البلاء ومن نال الشهادة العظمى من أيدي العدى وعلى, وعلى ابن عمه علي بن عبي طالب وعلى جميع الصحابة التابعين لهم بإحسان ما غاب في الأفق, في الأفق غارب وسلم تسليما So then the Sheikh, the rough translation of his, of his introduction, he says, All praise and thanks are due to Allah, the Almighty, the one who is unique in His majesty, eternal life and greatness, exultance and unthinkable glory, the self-sufficient Lord, the independent King who is not in need of anyone, the one who is high above all imaginations, the Almighty, the Great, the one whom no mind can comprehend. He is self-sufficient and independent from his creation. Everything is in constant need of his assistance and in need of him. He granted success to whom he will, who as a result believed and became upright. Then he tested the sweetness of his dialogue with his Lord at night, thus abandoning the sweetness of sleep and joined the company of those who keep their sides away from their beds, seeking high rank with their Lord. If you were to see them with their caravans traveling in severe darkness, one of them asking forgiveness for his shortcomings, another complaining of his sorrow, and another forgot to ask him because he is occupied with his remembrance. Glorified is he who woke them up while the people were sleeping. I praise him for his lofty bounties and blessings. I thank him and ask him to preserve the bounty of Al-Islam. I also testify that none has the right to be worshipped for Allah. He is alone, without a partner, 
Whoever seeks elevation with him will never be humiliated, and whoever is too arrogant to obey him will be humiliated and punished. I also bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his slave and his messenger, the one who clarified the lawful and the unlawful, the halal and the haram. And may peace and blessings be upon him, Abu Bakr siddiq his excellent companion in the cave, Umar, the one who was granted success to the truth, Uthman, the forbearing one at times of test and trials and tribulations, the one who obtained martyrdom at the hands of his enemies, and Ali, the son of the Prophet's uncle, Abu Talib, and on all his companions, on those and those, those who follow their, in their footsteps, um, whoever, and, and those who follow in their footsteps until the day of judgment to proceed. So then the Sheikh um, continues, and let's go to the next page. The Sheikh says, Ikhwani, لَقَدْ نَزَلَ بِكُمْ عَشْرُ رَمَضَانَ الْأَخِيرَةَ فِيهَا الْخَيْرَاتِ وَالْأُجُورِ الْكَثِيرَةِ فِيهَا الْفَضَائِلُ مَشْهُورَةُ وَالْخَسَائِسُ الْمَذْكُورَةِ فَمِنْ خَسَائِسِهَا أَنَّ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ كَانَ يَجْتَهِدُ بِالْعَمَلِ بِالْعَمَلِ فِي أَكْثَرَ مِنْ غَيْرِهَا فَفِي صَحِيحِ مُسْلِمٍ عن عائشة رضي الله عنها أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يجتهد في العشر في العشر الأواخر ما لا يجتهد في غيره وفي وفي الصحيحين عنها قالت كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا دخل العشر شد مئذره وأحيا ليله وأيقظ أهله وفي المسند عنها قالت كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يخلط العشرين بصلاة ونوم فإذا كان العشر شمر وشد المئزر So then the Sheikh says Oh my brothers the last 10 days of Ramadan have reached you reached us there are lots of good there's a lot an abundance of good rewards and virtue and great distinguishing qualities within these days from among their distinguishing qualities is that the Prophet ﷺ used to strive hard in these days more than he did in any other day or days. It is narrated by Aisha, Aisha ﷺ. She said that the Prophet ﷺ used to strive hard in the last 10 days of Ramadan more than he did in other days. Collected by a Muslim. It's also narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha as well, that the Prophet sallallahu used to tighten his lower garment, revive his night, uh, revive his night, as in he used to stay awake at night, the length of the night, and awaken his family as well, when the last 10 days of Ramadan had arrived. Also, narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha, that the Prophet ﷺ used to blend the first 20 days of Ramadan with prayer and sleep, but then the last 10 days arrived, he would prepare himself and tighten up his izar, he would, meaning he'd tighten up his belt. So he would um, stay away from his women folk, his wives, and he would focus on these 10 days in worship and striving hard in that. So let's carry on. Then the Sheikh says, Fafi. هذه الأحاديث دليل على فضيلة هذه العشر لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يجتهد فيها أكثر أكثر مما يجتهد في غيرها وهذا شامل للاجتهاد في جميع أنواع الإبادة من صلاة وقرآن وذكر وصدقة وغيرها ولأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يشد مئزره يعني يأتزل نساءه ليتفرغ للصلاة والذكر ولأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يحي ليلة بالقيام والقراءة والذكر بقلبه ولسانه وجوارحه لشرف هذه الليالي وطلبا ليلة القدر التي من قامها إيمانا واحتسابا غفر الله له ما تقدم من ذنبه وظاهر وظاهر هذا الحديث أنه صلى الله عليه وسلم 
يحيي الليل كله في إبادة ربه من الذكر والقراءة والصلاة والاستعداد لذلك والصحور وغيرها وبهذا يحصل الجمع بينها بينه وبين ما في صحيح مسلم عن عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت ما أعلمه صلى الله عليه وسلم قام ليلة حتى حتى الصباح لأن إحياء الليل لأن إحياء الليل ثابت في العشر يكون بالقيام وغيره من أنواع الإبادة والذي نفته إحياء الليل بالقيام فقط والله أعلم So then the Sheikh, he says, let's just go here, right, he said, and the aforementioned narrations are proofs of the virtues of the last 10 days of Ramadan because the Prophet wasallam, he worked diligently in them even more than he did in the other days, in other days. This includes his efforts in all aspects of worship, uh, for example, in prayer, in reciting the Quran, in remembering of Allah, doing the dhikr, charity and more. Also the Prophet wasallam used to revive his night with prayer, Quranic recitation and remembrance of Allah with his heart, tongue and limbs. This was all due to the nobility of these, of, of these nights and due to his eagerness to be successful in achieving the night of Qadr, the night of power, the night of decree, the night of Qadr, in which the previous sins of those who stood in prayer in this night while seeking Allah's pleasure, will be forgiven. And according to the apparent wording of the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ used to stay up the entire night worshipping his Lord with various righteous deeds, including remembering Allah, Quranic recitation, prayer, preparing for school, and more. And with this, we can combine between the previous narration and the narration found in Sahih Muslim from Aisha radiallahu anha, who said, I do not know the Prophet ﷺ to revive the whole night with prayer. Revival of the entire entirety in prayer includes various forms of prayer. However, Aisha was merely negating that the Prophet ﷺ stood in Salah the entire night and Allah knows best. So then the Shaykh continues and he says, وَمِمَّا يَدُلُّ عَلَىٰ فَضِيلَةِ الْأَشْرِ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْأَحَادِيثِ أَنَّ النَّبِيَّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ كَانَ يُقِذُ أَهْلَ أَهْلَهُ فيها للصلاة والذكر حرصا على اغتنام هذه الليالي المباركة بما هي جديرة به من الإبادة فإنها فرصة العمر وغنيمة لمن وفقه الله عز وجل فلا ينبغي للمؤمن الاقل أن يفوت, أن يفوت هذه الفرصة الثمينة على نفسه وعليه فما هي إلا ليال معدودة ربما يدرك الإنسان فيها نفحة من نفحات المولى فتكون سعادة له في الدنيا والآخرة وإنه لمن الحرمان العظيم والخسارة الفادحة أن ترى كثيرا من المسلمين يمضون هذه الأوقات الثمينة فيما لا ينفعهم يسهرون مؤذم الليل في اللهو الباطل فإذا جاء وقت القيام ناموا عنه وفوتوا على أنفسهم خيرا كثيرا لعلهم لا يدركونه بعد عامهم هذا أبدا وهذا من تلاعب الشيطان بهم ومكره بهم وصده إياهم عن سبيل الله وإغوائه لهم قال الله تعالى إن إبادي ليس لك عليهم سلطان إلا من اتبعك من الغاوين والعاقل لا يتخذ الشيطان وليا من دون الله مع علمه بعد أفوا بعداوته له فإن ذلك مناف للعقل والإيمان قال الله تعالى أفتتخذونه وذريته أولياء من دوني وهم لكم عدو بئس بئس للظالمين بدلا أفتتخذونه وذريته أولياء من دوني وهم لكم عدو بئس للظالم بئس للظالمين بدلا فقال تعالى إن الشيطان لكم عدو فتخذوه عدوا إنما يدعو 
hizbahu li yakunu min ashab as-sa'ir so then the shaykh he says from among the things which indicate or point towards the virtues of these 10 days is that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to wake his family up for prayer in order to remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this was due to his eagerness to take advantage of these uh, blessed nights and what was in them worshiping allah in them of course being worthwhile and the rewards reward being multiplied and also with uh, looking for the night of power as well within those last 10 nights for verily it is a golden opportunity for us in our lives as well as a precious treasure for the one allah grants success to i reaching these last 10 nights these blessed nights these virtuous nights therefore it is not befitting for the intelligent believer to waste this invaluable opportunity without him and his family benefiting from it it is only a few days perhaps allah the most merciful um, uh, may reach an individual and may be the cause for him succeeding in this world and the hereafter if that mercy is reached and that ample reward is reached it is indeed a great deprivation and a disastrous loss to see many muslims spend these precious occasions involved in absurd things which do not benefit them or just wasting their time they stay up spending most of the night time hours engaged in pastime and just relaxation and doing things that don't benefit them and falsehood as well when it is time for the night prayer they go to bed depriving themselves of abundant good which they may not come across after that year of their life why because you never know when your life when allah will take your soul you just don't know you may, this could be our last ramadan all over the years less than today was listening could be our last ramadan we might not see the next one so we should take advantage of it so the sheikh says this is no doubt from satan's games and plots against the people in order to turn them away from allah's path and it is a way to mislead them allah the most high said he said surely uh, thou shall have no power over my servants except such of the erring ones as choose to follow that and the intelligent person will not take the devil as his protector besides allah after knowing his enmity towards him doing this contradicts sound intellect and true faith as allah the most high said also here he said will you then take him and his off, off, offspring as friends instead of me while they are your enemies evil is exchanged for the wrong doers he also said subhanahu wa ta'ala surely the devil is an enemy to you so treat him as an enemy he only invites his followers that they may become the dwellers of the blazing fire so then the sheikh says he says so then let's continue he says woman woman khasa isi hadhi al-ashr anna an-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana ya'takif fiha wal i'tikaf wal i'tikaf luzum al-masjid lit-tafarrug li ta'at Allah azza wa jalla wa huwa min as-sunan al-thabitati bi kitab Allah wa sunnati rasulih sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala Allah azza wa jalla wala wala tubashiruhun wa antum makifun fi al-masajid wa qad wa qad i'takafa an-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ataf wa ataf wa takafa ashabuhu ma'hu wa ba'da fa an-nabiy sa'id al-khudri radiyallahu anhu anna an-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam i'takafa al-ashr al-awwal min ramadan thumma i'takafa al-ashr al-awsat thumma qala inni inni i'atafiq al-ashr al-awwal iltamis hadhi al-layla thumma i'takif al-ashr al-awsat thumma uti thumma utitu faqil li faqila li innaha fi al-ashr al-awakhir faman ahabba minkum an ya'tika ya'tafik ya'tafika wa ya'takifa fal ya'takif al-hadith wa rawahu muslim so then the sheikh says and so from the virtues of these uh, 10 days or the last 10 days of ramadan uh, is that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to perform al-i'tikaf and al-i'tikaf it is to dedicate your time to be in allah's service by staying in the masjid and be 
being alone and focusing on worship. And the proof of its legislation is mentioned in Allah's book and the tradition of his messenger, the son of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and do not have sexual relations with them, your wives, while you are in al-itikaf, i.e. confining oneself in a mosque for prayer and invocations, leaving the worldly activities in the masajids. Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 187. And the Shaykh, uh, the Shaykh then continues on and he, he says, the Prophet Wasallam isolated himself in the masjid, um, as well as his companions who followed him in that, as it is narrated by Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, Radiallahu anhu, the Prophet Sallallahu isolated himself in the masjid during the first 10 days of Ramadan and then the middle 10 days of Ramadan and then he said, I remained in the masjid for the first and the middle 10 days of Ramadan looking for the night of Qadr. But then it was said to me that the night of Qadr is in the last 10 days of Ramadan. Therefore, anyone amongst you who wants to isolate himself and do itikaf in these 10 days should go ahead and do so. So let's continue. So then the Shaykh says, وَفِي صَحِيحَيْنِ عَنْ عَائِشَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهَا قَالَتْ كَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَأْتَكِفُ لَاشَرَ الْأَوَاخِرِ مِنْ رَمَضَانَ حَتَّى تَوَفَاهُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ ثُمَّ اَعْتَكَفَ أَزْوَاجُهُ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ وَفِي صَحِيحِ الْبُخَارِ عَنْهَا أَيْدًا قَالَتْ كَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَأْتَكِفُ فِي كُلِّ رَمَضَانَ عَشَرَةَ أَيَّامٍ فَلَمَّا كَانَ الْعِلْمُ الَّذِي قُبِضَ فِيهِ اتَّكَفَ عِشْرِينَ يَوْمًا وَعَنْ أَنَسْ رضي الله عنه قال كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يأتكف لاشر على واخرة من رمضان فلم يأتكف عاما فلما كان العلم فلما كان العلم المقبل يأتكف عشرين رواه أحمد والترمذي وصححة وعن عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا أراد أن يأتكف يأتكف صلى الفجر ثم دخل مؤتف مؤتكفه فاستأذن فاستأذنته عائشة فاستأذنت هو عائشة فأذن لها فضربت فضربت لها خيب خباء وسألت حفصة عائشة عن تستأذن لها ففعلت فضربت خباء فلما رأت ذلك زينب أمرت بخباء فضرب لها فلما رأى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الأخبية قال ما هذا قالوا بناء بناء عائشة بناء عائشة وحفصة وزينب قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال بر أردنا بهذا انزعوها فلا أراها فنزعت وترك الاعتكاف في رمضان حتى اتكف في في العشر الاول العشر الاول من شوال من البخاري ومسلم وفي روايات وقال الامام احمد بن حنبل رحمه الله لا اعلم عن احد من العلماء خلافا ان الاعتكاف مسنون so then the sheikh said it is also narrated by uh, Aisha radiallahu anha who said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to remain in the masjid during the last 10 days of Ramadan and he continued upon that until Allah the Most High took his soul. Then his wives performed al-itikaf after his death. Collected by al-Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to also on the, author, on the authority of uh, Aisha radiallahu anha the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to isolate himself in the masjid for 10 days in every Ramadan. But in the following year, he isolated himself in the masjid for 20 days to make up a previous year he missed, collected by Al-Bukhari. Also, uh, and then narrated by uh, Anas radiallahu anhu, he said that the Prophet sallallahu used to isolate himself in every, in every last 10 days of Ramadan. So every last 10 days of Ramadan, he used to isolate himself. So therefore, it was a year that he missed and did not seclude himself. So when the next year came, he performed a litika for 20 days. Uh, Aisha radiallahu anha, may Allah be pleased with her, said the Prophet sallam, used to pray the dawn prayer and then isolate himself in his tent in the masjid. So I asked permission from him to set up my tent in the masjid and he granted me permission. Then Hafsa asked me to seek permission 
for her from the Prophet ﷺ to set up her tent and permission was granted to her. When Zainab saw this, she also asked that a tent be erected for her. And when the Prophet ﷺ saw the tents in the masjid, he asked, What are these? They said, They are tents for Aisha, Hafsa and Zainab. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Do you seek with this to be obedient to Allah? Take them down. I do not want to see them. They then took them down. But the Prophet ﷺ did not make a little tikaf in that Ramadan and made them up in the first 10 days of Shawwal. Collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. And uh, Al-Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, may Allah have mercy on him, said, I do not know anyone from the scholars that oppose the legislation of Al-Itikaf being a supererogatory act of worship. So that's just extra benefit there. So let's carry on. So then uh, the Sheikh says, وَوَالْمَقْسُودُ بِالْإِتِكَافِ إِنْ قِتَاءُ الْإِنسَانِ عَنِ النَّاسِ لِيَتَفَرَّغَ لِطَاعَةِ اللَّهِ فِي مَسْجِدٍ مِنْ مَسَاجِدِهِ طَلَبًا لِفَضْلِهِ وَثَوَابِهِ وَإِدْرَاكِ لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ وَلِذَلِكَ يَنْبَغِي لِلْمُعْتَقِفِ أَنْ يَشْتَغِرَ بِالذِّكْرِ وَالْقِرَاءَةِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَالْإِبَادَةِ وَأَنْ يَتَجَنَّبَ وَأَنْ يَتَجَنَّبَ مَا لَا يَعْنِيهِ مِنْ حَدِيثِ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا بَأْسَ أَنْ يَتَحَدَّثَ قَلِيلًا بِحَدِيثٍ مُبَاحٍ مَا عَهْلِهِ أَوْ غَيْرِهِمْ لِمَصْلَحَةٍ لِحَدِيثِ صَفِيَّةَ أُمِّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ رضي الله عنها قالت كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم معتقفا فأتيته أزوره ليلا فحدثته ثم قمت لأنقلب أي لأنسرف إلى بيتي فقام النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم معي الحديث متفق عليه So then uh, the Sheikh goes on to say he says Al-Itikaf is when a Muslim secludes himself from the people in order to devote in order to devote his time in the worship of his Lord in a masjid from the, the mosques, the masajid of Allah, seeking with that his Lord's pleasure and reward, as well as seeking the night of Qadr, or the, uh, the night of decree, Laylatul Qadr. This is the reason why it is highly recommended for the one, one performing al itikaf to keep himself busy with the remembrance of Allah, uh, reciting the Quran, praying and worshipping, Likewise, it is also recommended for him to stay away from the things that do not concern him and from talking about the worldly affairs. There is nothing wrong with talking seldom about permissible things um, with one's family or with others if there, is a need to, if there is a need for it. And the proof for this is the narration of Safiya, عنه, the mother of the believers, may Allah be pleased with her, who said, the Prophet ﷺ was performing al itikaf in the masjid when I came and visited him and spoke with him one night. I then stood up to return back to, to my house and the Prophet ﷺ also stood up with me and escorted me. Collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Muttafaqun alayhi. So then the Shaykh goes on to say, he says, Ahem. وَيَحْرُمُ عَلَى الْمُؤْتَقِفَ الْجِمَاءُ وَمُقَدَّمَاتُهُ مِنَ التَّقْبِيلِ وَالْلَمْسِ لِشَهْوَةٍ لِقَوْلِ تَعَالَى وَلَا تُبَاشِرُوهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسْجِدِ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ وَأَمَّا خُرُوجُهُ فَأَمْ وَأَمَّا خُرُوجُهُ مِنْ الْمَسْجِدِ فَإِنْ كَانَ بِبَعْضِ بَدْنِهِ فَلَا بَأْسَ بِهِ لِحَدِيثِ عَائِشَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهَا قَالَتْ كَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَخْ يخرج رأس يخرج رأسه من المسجد وهو مؤتق وهو مؤتقف فاغسله وأنا حائض رواه البخاري وفي رواية كانت ترجع رأس النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وهي حائض وهو مؤتقف في المسجد وهي في هجرتها هجرتها يناولها رأسه وَإِنْ كَانَ خُرُوجُ وَإِنْ كَانَ خُرُوجُهُ بِجَمِيعِ بَدْنِ فَهُوَ ثَلَاثَةُ فَهُوَ ثَلَاثَةُ أَقْسَامٍ So I'll just translate this bit and then we'll go through the categories that we just mentioned. 
So the Sheikh says it is permissible for the one performing an itikaf to have intercourse with his spouse or involved in flirtatious behavior. It is impermissible, sorry. So it is impermissible. It is not permissible for the one performing an itikaf to have intercourse with his spouse or involved in flirtatious types of behavior, including kissing and touching for sexual desire. This is because of Allah's statement, the Most High, and do not have sexual relations with them, your wives, while you are in an itikaf, i.e. confining oneself in a mosque for prayers and invocations, leaving the worldly, leaving the worldly activities in the, in the masjids. وَلَا تُبَاشِرُوهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ عَكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسْجِدِ But as for leaving the masjid, if only part of the body is outside the masjid and not the entire body, then there is nothing wrong with that. This is based on the narration of Aisha radiallahu anha. She said that the Prophet sallallahu used to push out his head from the masjid to my room while he was in his seclusion and I would wash his head while I am on my menses when she was menstruating. Al-Bukhari. In another narration it says she used to comb his head while she was on her menses and while he was in seclusion worshipping his Lord in the masjid. So leaving the masjid in totality with one's entire body is of three types. So this is where we stopped. So we'll go through the three types now. So the Sheikh says Al-Awwalu Al-Khuruju li amrin la buddha minhu tiba'an aw shar'an كقضاء حاجة البول والغائط والوضوء الواجب والغسل والواجب لجن والغسل الواجب لجنابة أو غيرها والأكل والأكل والشرب فهذا جائز إذا لم يمكن فعله في المسجد فإن أمكن فعله في المسجد فلا مثل أن يكون في المسجد حمام يمكنه أن يقضي حاجته فيه وأن يغتسل فيه أو يكون له من من يأتيه بالأكل والشرب فلا يخرج حين إذن لعدم الحاجة إليه. So the first uh, type or category is the, uh, in situation where you can leave is to leave the masjid for an inescapable matter or one uh, a need that cannot be uh, dealt with otherwise. Uh, for example. Relieving oneself, performing no obligatory ablution, performing the mandatory washing due to major ritual impurity, for example, eating and drinking or other than what are mentioned. In this case, it will be permissible for, he, for the one doing it, the calf, for him to leave the masjid as long as those needs cannot be fulfilled inside the masjid. However, if these needs can be fulfilled in, in the masjid, then there is no need for him to go out and therefore it's not permissible for him to leave the masjid. For example, if there are bath rooms in the masjid where he can relieve himself perform the ritual ablution and even wash up and if there is someone who provides him with food and drink and for example bringing it to the masjid then he is not allowed to leave the masjid while in the state of it, the calf. then um, the second situation here al-thani al-khuruju li-amri ta'ati li-amri ta'atin la tajibu alayhi ka'iyadati maridin wa shuhudi janazatin وَنَحْوُ ذَلِكَ فَلَا يَفْعَلُهُ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشْتَرَتَ ذَلِكَ فِي ابْتِدَاءِ اِتِّكَافِهِ مِثْلُ أَنْ يَكُونَ إِنْدَهُ مَرِيدٌ يَكُونَ إِنْدَهُ مَرِيدٌ يُحِبُّ أَنْ يَعُودَهُ أَوْ يَخْشَى مِنْ مَوْتِهِ فَيَشْتَرِتُ فِي ابْتِدَاءِ اِتِّكَافِهِ خُرُوجَهُ لِذَلِكَ فَلَا بَأْسَ بِهِ So then the second type or second situation is to leave for the purpose of, of worshipping, to leave the masjid for the purpose of worshipping that is not obligatory on him. This includes visiting the sick, following the funeral proces uh, procession and other deeds. It is permissible for him to leave the masjid for these acts of worship as long as he put a condition from the beginning of his itikaf that he wants to visit a sick person that he knows who is in a critical condition, for example. Otherwise, it's not permissible. So it's important to note that what the Sheikh said there. And then... Uh, we wrap to the third situation. So the Sheikh says, "Athalithu al khuruju li amrin yunafi al itikafa kal khuruju kal khuruju lil bayi wa shirai wa jima yahli wa mubashir wa mubashiratihim wa nahu dalika." فلا يفعله لا لا بشرط ولا بغير شرط لأنه يناقض الاتكاف وينافي المقصود من. So then the third situation, leaving the masjid to do something which contradicts. For example, 
leaving the masjid for the purpose of buying and selling or to have relations with one's wife or to behave with her in a flirtation manner, etc. In this case, he should not leave the masjid whether with conditions or without because these things contradict his itikaf and the intended objective behind it. So then the Sheikh says, Allahumma wafiqna lima fihi salahu dinina wa dunyana wahsin aqibatana wa akrim mathwana wafir lana wa liwalidina wa li jimil muslimina birahmatika ya arhamar rahimin wa sallallahu wa sallama ala nabiyina wa muhammadin ala nabiyina muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in so then the shaykh says and he says and um, I've just missed uh, reading out uh, a paragraph so hold on a second then the shaykh says وَمِنْ خَسَائِسِ هَذِهِ الْعَشَرِ أَنَّ فِيهَا لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ أَلَّتِي هِيَا خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَرِ فَعْرِفُوا فَعْرِفُوا رَحِمَكُمْ اللَّهِ لِهَذِ الْعَشَرِ فَضْلَهَا وَلَا تُضَيُّوهَا فَوَقْتُهَا ثَمِينٌ وَخَيْرُهَا ظَاهِرٌ مُبِينٌ Sorry, missed that paragraph out. So then the Sheikh says, and from the vir- virtues of these last 10 days is the night of Qadr, Laylatul Qadr, which is better than a thousand months. So you can calculate how many days or years that is. That's a long, long time. And the reward is ample. It's found in these days. So in the last 10 days, in the last 10 nights, we find Laylatul Qadr. Therefore, know the virtue of these days. May Allah have mercy upon you and do not waste do not waste this opportunity. Do not waste these nights and these days. For verily, you know, it's this time is precious. It's from the most precious of time. It, I mean, time is precious anyway. But this is even more precious because of the the great reward that is within it. And, and it's and the affair is crystal clear. The sheikhs explained it. The affair is crystal clear. And then we read the dua um, uh, earlier when I missed out the paragraph that I just read and translated. And uh, the rough meaning of it being that uh, Sheikh says, Oh Allah, grant us success to whatever is beneficial for us in our religion and beautify and beautify our and, and magnify our reward and beautify our end. Give us a good ending. Forgive us uh, and our parents and all of the Muslims with your mercy. You are the most merciful. May the peace and blessings and salutations of Allah be upon our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam his family, members, and his companions. So alhamdulillah, we conclude the lesson there, inshallah. So it was quite an important lesson. And uh, may Allah give us success and in attaining the reward of Laylatul Qadr and uh, may take an advantage of these last 10 nights that we find ourselves in and we're blessed to be in. That's a, 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 a blessing. And we can't give enough thanks for being in those these last 10 nights. And we the only rational thing here for us to do is to take advantage of it and strive. Even if it's a struggle, we should strive because these 10 days will be gone. And before we know it, we'll be in Shawwal and Eid will be here. So uh, uh, I advise myself and you brothers take advantage of these last 10 nights and take uh, the advice from the Sheikh here, Alhamdulillah, uh, and we'll conclude here. So inshallah, we'll see you tomorrow uh, around the same time. And Buddha Wasim will continue the lessons with Nai Ta'ala. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت واستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته